Thanks for joining me. This lecture topic is entitled Good Practices with JMeter. Let's start with version management. There are several things I want to mention regarding the concept of JMeter version management. JMeter itself is under version control and some of its components can be stored in a version control system like Git, GIT, or Mercurial, and there are others. When it, is, when it comes to managing the release of JMeter inside the IDE under the Help menu, you can see the current version of JMeter by selecting the About Apache JMeter option. At this web location, you can find what is the latest version of the software. You should take care in deciding when to upgrade. If you are in the middle of a test project and you are not experiencing any issues with the product, it is best to wait until you reach a breakpoint or the endpoint. When you decide to upgrade, remember that you may have changes made in the JMeter directory structure or to property files. Create a backup copy of the JMeter directory structure before you replace the structure with a new release. Then you can update the new structure from the backup. As you create and save JMX scripts, JTL or CSV files for repeated use, it is a good practice to create backups of these files either in a version control system or to a flash drive or some other storage system. If you are working with a team, a version control system would be the best choice for the long term. The last piece of advice regarding version control is with the plugin manager. It is a version control system associated with it. It is wise to check it on a regular basis. This is a tab in the plugins manager that is labeled upgrades. It may provide you with information that indicates changes are available for some plugin you already have installed. At a good breakpoint, you should pick or click the apply changes button. It will upgrade plugins and restart your JMeter IDE. Now for the thread management. Except for the original thread group, all the other thread groups come through the plugin manager. So if there are updates to those thread groups before you apply the changes, you may want to follow up by checking what the changes are in case they reflect changes that affect some script you have in use. There might be some additional post upgrade actions you will need to do as follow up. And for cookie management, your JMeter scripts should always contain an HTTP cookie manager element. This ensures cookies will be passed in the HTTP response headers. Also, because you may in some test cases need to check the clear cookies option between user iterations. This is one of the elements that you do not have to think about when you use the templates in creating a new script. Another point for go good practice is authorization management. The HTTP authorization manager specifies one or more user logins to web pages that are restricted using server authentication. This kind of authentication appears when you attempt to access a restricted page and your browser pops up a login dialog. JMeter sends the login credentials when it encounters this condition. You can also clear authorization on each iteration. The next thing is recording management. There are two elements necessary to record events in JMeter thread groups. The first element controls the recording session. It is called the HTTP 
test grip recorder element. There, you specify what port a browser needs to connect with for JMeter to collect application navigation events and create sampler elements. The data collection can be voluminous, so the element has filter features to extract unwanted data like text files or JavaScript files and what have you. The element also has a target controller setting to specify a point or point to where the recorded elements should reside. This is where the second element comes in. It is called the recording controller. Normally, this controller is located somewhere subordinate to the thread group. All the recorded elements will be in sequence subordinate to the recording controller element. That is, if the recording controller is referred to in the HTTP test script recorder element, a nice feature on the recording controller is the ability to click a button to clear or remove all the subordinate recorded samples. Sometimes your recording did not progress the way you wanted it. That is a time that the button becomes handy. If you use an earlier release of JMeter than 5.0, you might see another associated element called Workbench. It is a deprecated item. Now the variable or parameterization management, there are several elements that can be used to define one or more variables such as user-defined variables element, counter element, the test plan element, JSR223 and bean shell samplers, pre and post processors, and user parameters element. It is more than enough elements where you can define variables for later use. After a variable is defined, it can be referred by enveloping the name in dollar left squiggly bracket right squiggly bracket such as dollar left squiggly back bracket sorry var name or var some variable name followed by right squiggly bracket for resource management jmeter has the following system requirements Make sure the Java Virtual Machine is installed. JMeter is a Java-based application. It requires the Java runtime to run. Multi-core CPUs with four or more cores is recommended. As far as memory is concerned, 16 gigabyte of RAM is recommended. You can run with less, but more is better. And for disk space, JMeter does not rely much on disk, but having an SSD is a step in the right direction. The minimal configuration should be at least 512 kilobytes per thread plus around 100 megabytes for JMeter to operate, which gives around 100 megabytes of RAM and then add 0.5 megabytes per planned thread count. A 1,000 thread count would require at least around 50 megabyte of disk space for JMeter plus 400 megabytes for Java and much how much extra space you need for test data and test results. That's not a solid number there. I don't have good information on that one. My personal thought is those numbers might be a little low based on my experiences. I would plan on allocating one gigabyte to heap memory for every 1,000 threads or use the concurrency planned for testing. 
Now for reusable code management, the bean shell and the JSR223 processors are the primary elements used for adding code processing either before or after an event. The language now acceptable is known as Groovy for the JSR223 processor. JavaScript or Java is the default for the bean shell processor. When you are developing scripts of a low concurrency load, JMeter's JavaScript or bean shell engines provide decent performance. But if the script uses hundreds of threads, the JSR223 Groovy engine performs much better with less overhead. This means that JMeter will execute the Groovy script faster, resulting in minimal response time impact. My time has ended for this session. I thank you for yours. Join me in the next video.